Welcome to another weekend here on the platform. It is our tradition to examine developments in the polity, and today's program will be no different. My name is Sam Omashaye. Former President Olusegun Obasanjo is no longer a partisan politician, but since his self-imposed retirement, rather than focus on his otter farm, his concern and interest in Nigeria have been the drive for his favorite pastime, letter writing. For the second time under one administration, he has written two scathing letters to President Muhammad Buhari, and the former is not taking it lying down. Also, she was the foremost female presidential candidate, but in the early hours of Thursday, Dr. Obi Ezekwesili, former presidential candidate of the Allied Congress Party of Nigeria, broke the news of her withdrawal from the race on her Twitter handle. Should we expect similar moves from other New Age presidential candidates? Who may lose their nerve for Nigeria's murky politics? We are counting down to the presidential election and keyboard warriors are having the time of their lives writing about the upcoming elections. But one man is not leaving anything to chance. His vitriolic letters to President Muhammad Buhari may not get him booted out of office, but it has caught the attention of Nigerians. Well, that man is our person of the week. Two letters in one year, same writer, one recipient, and he doesn't seem to be backing down from his attacks. His first letter to President Muhammad Buhari generated so much public reaction, it even kicked off sales career for many would-be vendors. Copies were sold on the streets in the country's capital, Abuja. His letters, however unpleasant they may be, remind the executive that they are accountable to Nigerians. Former president of Nigeria and Nigeria's foremost letter writer, Olusegun Obasanjo, OBJ, is our person of the week. Well, public affairs analyst Lekon Shote joins me to analyze the uh, topical issues of this week. Uh, welcome to this show, sir. Thank you very much, Sam. Yeah. Now, I think we are going to start with the OBJ letter. Uh, what do you make of the letter? Well, I, just as your intro has done, I want to also refer to the previous letter. Uh, the first letter is saying that, essentially, that the president has not delivered and that he is going to, if he wants to counsel the president to not come for the second term, and that he is actually going to... Uh, shall we say, midwife a uh, coalition that yes. will work against him, mm -hmm. you know. And then in this second letter, he's pretty much uh, gone through that. And then I saw somebody who, in the first letter, was trying to be, shall we say, um, uh, disinterested. Now, talking like somebody who is either trying to let us know that he has spoken with uh, Western uh, powers or may speak with Western powers so that they can one support the presidential candidate of PDP as uh, and then also work against the re election of um, President Buhari. My concern is this, and then he talk, talks about the, uh, the PVC and the, the problem we might have with the, um, the those machines, the voting machines, and all that. And I look at that and I'm like, okay. It appears to me that the uh, pres former president of Basanjo has, has lost his focus uh, somewhat. You know, you said you want to be disinterested, you know, and then because some you claim that your Christian values, you know, somebody came to you and I said, Christian, you have forgotten forgiving him, therefore you are promoting him. I would have thought that 
You recall that sometime last year, yes. a young man came and said, not too young to, to run. Ru run people, came to him. And then he seemed to endorse the, the idea. A, a, a number of uh, parties seem to have come up in what you call the CUPP. Yeah. I would have thought he would work with them to have an alternative to the old fogies that he seems he doesn't like. You don't want uh, um, Buhari. You also have said you don't want, um, shall we say, uh, former president, uh, vice president, uh, Atiku. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, you are now taking sides. I think something is wrong. Uh, Obasanjo has raised a number of issues in this. And, uh, you know, you, you are, it's a very good thing that you are coming from his, uh, his past his epistolary outburst. <laughs> exactly. You know? Now, he has come up with a, a series of uh, allegations. In the first one, I thought that it was a subdued rage. Okay. Uh, as you said, an attempt at playing avuncula to our politics. Exactly. People would say, oh, I'm high above all of these. I, right. am, yeah. I am a really yeah. a nice yeah. guy. And I, uh, I have no interest. I have no interest in partisan. any of the political parties and so mm -hmm. on. He is partisan and, and now. It, and now that all of these things have unraveled, even the CEO people has come to affirm right. his support for PDP, exactly. which he says he was coming, and he talked about third force. Exactly. And he's not talking about third force anymore, anymore. now. And he's now just talking about, look, these people are trying to rig the election. Uh, Buhari mm -hmm. is trying to self-succeed himself. That's right. like, he's and another abacha, abacha and, that, and all of those things. What, what kind of rage is coming out of that? I don't, how does, it, does Buhari look like a bacha? <laughs> you know, uh, you recall that those, uh, one, a bacha yes. compelled yes. the five left front fingers yes. parties Yes. To endorse him. To again. Yes, Buhari hasn't done that. Mm -hmm. Abacha was picking people up and locking them up, people yes. who will stand up against him. Yeah. Buhari hasn't done that. Mm -hmm. So I don't see how that, it's just like you want to give a dog yeah. uh, a bad name in Not order to hang, hang it. it. Yeah. And then you had, you saw the threat of getting to the ICC yes, and all that. I'm like, what is this? Is getting. It's trying to a, get a, international a, a, attention. A, a bit too far yeah. from, from, uh, for, uh, from my understanding. I think. Uh, he is now partisan. Mm. He is now a politician. Even if he's not carrying a PDP card, mm. he is, as far as I'm concerned, a PDP man. A, P a PDP part I mean, partisan. he has said he supports Atiku. Yeah, he, he, has, he has said, said that. He has said he supports uh, PDP. And he took I, I, with I all saw of them. some things on the grapevine which says that he may even be going abroad to begin to canvass. Okay. You know, and I recall some two, three months ago when he was, was it in Hong Kong or somewhere yeah. in the Asian countries? He actually was marketing yes. Abacha, and I thought he was going Atiku. beyond, I think I'm sorry, yeah. I thought he was going beyond the brief that he gave to himself. He also said he has available evidence that uh, there are plans really make, to rig. Let, let him make it public. He should, he should not yeah. be talking like that. That he is should, not statemently. That's not statemently. Yeah. I am disappointed in him. Obvious, they could still withdraws from his party, from the presidential race. Okay. I, I see this thing as the crash of idealism in Nigerian politics. Hmm. Or yeah, have a point. idealism or reality coming to roost. All right. <laughs> yeah, I, the independent, I've, I don't know if you read my column some time ago, I yeah. had actually conversed that a lot of all these um, political parties, presidential candidates, yeah. should actually come up. They had the PACT, which uh, uh, presidential aspirants, yeah. um, uh, fact, fact yeah. and all that. I, I think uh, there was less than, um, not all of them were sincere about the whole thing. Obi, who was like the um, umpire of yeah. that thing, yeah. now came, came out to, become a to player. now be a player. And then even the others did not quite would not yeah, quite yeah. agree with themselves. Yeah. And this is, again, why I felt that somebody like Obasan Joe should have stepped in and then galvanized them together. If sincerely he meant to be dispassionate and then to work for a thought force, mm. you know. Now, funds. Mm. I knew that there would be issues of funding. Mm. I knew there would be issues of structures. Mm. Because if you like, think about it. Obi's vice presidential candidate is actually the chairman of the party. Yeah. That tells you a lot. Yeah. How 
much structure they but have. But the thing, the thing is that they, when they I talk about idealism, is that, is that idea, the idealism of Obi is that, you know, I want to clean the system, I want to do all of that, I want to run for president, the presidential, as a presidential aspirant. That's right. And, and one of the checks was that he wanted to join a party with people he did not know. <laughs> and he's beginning to know, uh, probably knowing them now, that he says, he, she says, well, my vision is different from, from theirs. Their vision, and yeah. interestingly, she has been vocal against Buhari, and then she leaves the party and they and say they, they want they to join Buhari. Buhari. That tells you. <laughs> yeah, I think you, 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 have a, you have a point there. It, it tells you that the reality of Nigerian politics mm. uh, frontally confronts, brutally frontally confronts mm. the idealism that we mm. are talking about. I think it was um, Chief Aulawa who said that um, progressives mm. will have to work with, with the conservatives in the meantime. With the conservatives. And then when they get to where they're going, <laughs> then the, the conservatives will work away. away. Yeah. You know, I, I think, I don't know if that is quite working out right now. He gave now. an example even when he said it. Okay. Yeah, he gave an example. I can't remember that example. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm looking at the Nigerian yeah. experience. Yeah. It, it, it looks like it is the conservatives that are winning all the time. They, are, they work more along uh, the premise of expediency, funding, um, assurances that there will be appointments. Yeah, deal, deal making. Deal making, essentially. And because they're talking about structure, because you need trust structure to win it, the exactly. politics. Uh, uh, Most of these people have no structure, they have no money. They have no structure. And you know, they say money is the mother's milk of politics. You know, you know, you know, a child does not always, does not need only mother's milk. But mother's milk is so crucial that you can have other things, but you still need the you mother's need spirit to survive. Exactly. Yes. You, know, you know, even in Christianity, they tell you that money is a chariot Char of evangelism. Yeah, they do. They say, they say that <laughs> uh, food is made for black time. Why make it merry? Uh -huh. yeah? You know. But money answers all, all things. things. So it's, it's important <laughs> to, to have, to have uh, the funding, the structures. Yes. And, and on ground. Yeah, uh, on ground. Yeah, and you I know, there's the, the David, <laughs> Henry David Toro, the, the writer, used to say, I'm not a joiner. That's, That's right. what he said. That's right. He said, I'm not a joiner. He said, joining is like pigs who come together, okay. together in a sty okay. in order to feel warm. All right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> exactly. Because uh, you, you'll be dirty there. Exactly. You have to be dirty you, to you, come you, together you, to you, feel warm. You, you get yeah. muddied, yes. So I, I, I think it just confirms to us that um, the. I keep looking at the idea that the constitution insists that you must be a member of a political party before you can run. Mm -hmm. I think this is time we begin to examine. Uh, yes, this, uh, and, and next says, this, well, this we cannot, we cannot, we cannot um, accept your withdrawal. It's too late. So you're a candidate, <laughs> whether you <laughs> whether like you it like or it not. Because I imagine that the whole thing is, is already printed. Yes. You name your party. Is yes, it's, it's, so, it's a logistical so, nightmare for so, them to say, so, okay, we are withdrawing yeah, everything. It's going to cost a lot of money and yes. time. And you may mm. even, they may even not make it before the deadline. Yes, yes. So, so, and I understand mm, that mm. some items may have been shipped to the yes, various different places. locations now. Some things are printed already. To now recall yeah. them and all that. No, 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 she, yeah. Some people will still vote for her no, anyway. No, they will. Yeah, even mm. They will even make mistakes. Mm. Even if she didn't withdraw. Mm. People, some people, you know, people who did not even plan to vote for her, they will mm. mistakenly press something yeah. really wrong. So it's going to happen. Mm. You will just count it as one of those invalid um, mm. uh, 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 votes. Uh, I guess that's what it's going to be. But that, that again tells us that as we stand here, politics is not about idealism, it's always about the practical. It's really even, even in the most idealistic of winners, they are always practical. Macron, we can say, Macron didn't really have a structure. That's right. But he won because of personal magnetism. But That's coming right. into office, he had to face the reality, face the reality of right. the structure. Yeah, but also, so some people can say now that maybe because of new media, because right. of the social network and media and so on, you don't have to spend as much money for structure and all of that. That is true in true, in, in in true in democracy, some, some, not in our some, own. Yeah, not in our own. Mm, America, not yet. I recall yeah. that uh, former President Obama garnered a lot of funding, yes, a lot online. of volunteers, mm, volunteers. And a lot of uh, votes, yes, you know, online and. Uh, I guess he was probably the first person to actually demonstrate mm. that mm. you can use the social media mm. to achieve this. But in our environment, 
where, uh, well, they say we are very much online in Nigeria mm -hmm. and all that. But our attitude to issues, the degree of poverty here, you are looking, looking at two things in the American environment or the Western environment, two things. They are already middle class. Mm -hmm. They are satiated, yeah. almost. Yeah. And then secondly, yeah. the issue of enlightenment, yeah. that is the essential citizen Sense, yeah. knows about the nuances yeah. of democracy, exactly. expectation f from him, mm. and the expectation he has of the, the state actors. Of course. So the, it is easy to communicate with them, but in this our system, it's it is a stomach infrastructure. The structure thing, because uh, usually you <laughs> expect that the person at Obi will have so many followers who will say, okay, I'm going to support you here in, uh, uh, exactly. in Kogi State, and somebody, I'm going to be your volunteers uh, 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 there, exactly. without money, without and they money. start mobilizing they within start mobilizing. their own yeah. That is how it works in true democracies. Uh, exactly. But uh, going, we are reaching the, long, the, the last stretch of, of the whole thing. Yeah, that's right. And uh, you will need to spend money on agents, spend money on transportation, it's, it's, feeding, it's, it's, uh, accommodation, and all of that. Uh, exactly. They don't have those resources. That's yeah. why even the party is now associated with uh, Buhari. It's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Lincoln Shorty, as always. Thank you, Sam. Big Talk is with governorship candidate of the All Progressive Congress in Delta State, Chief Great Ogwaru. <music> Welcome to Big Talk. I have a special guest. Today is no other than the great Ogwaru, the APC uh, governorship uh, candidate uh, of Delta State. You're welcome to this show. Thank you very and much. I must say that it's not just great Ogwaru, it's somebody who was my senior in government college, really. Oh, you, you remember that? <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> well, many people, the first question people will ask is, you know, I've been a serial uh, contestant for the top post in Delta State. Mm -hmm. So why is this uh, going to be different from what you have had in the past? Yes, uh, thank you, Sam. Um, I've been contesting those elections, as you know, and um, that was under the PDP regimes. Yeah. And uh, if you know, as everybody knows in Nigeria, the, those elections had always had problems. Most of those elections ended up in the courts because we felt dissatisfied with the outcomes. The popular, the popular opinion on the field would say that we won those elections, but the results that we announced were always very different. And um, being somebody who does not like to be cheated, who insists on having his rights, we. We have been tenacious in making sure that we got a mandatory claim. So that took us from one election to another. But the good news is, times are changing. The circumstances have changed. What circumstances? The circumstances, what happened in Delta State could not have happened except there was institutional support from elsewhere. Right there in Delta State, we overpowered PDP. But the influence from outside the state always made it impossible for us to take our mandate. What influence? The influence from Abuja. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know what I'm talking you, you, about. You mean the security issues, issues okay. the INEC controlled PDP at that time. And uh, of course, the power of incumbency at the federal level then, mm. with the PDP sitting president. Uh, incidentally, Delta State seemed to have been their cash cow for that party. And uh, they didn't want to let go, but this time around, PDP is not at the federal level as a government. The president of our country is not PDP, and it's not PDP compliant. So we believe that um, given the right circumstances, the level playing field, we will trounce them in those elections that will come in the next few weeks. We are saying now that the situation is going to be flipped now, in which case you are in, you are in the driver's seat in the sense that you have security control, you have support to government in the center. Are you now saying that what the PDP did to to um, to skew the elections, you are going to lay yourself liable in case it favors you, that you took advantage of um, what they are already taking advantage of? 
Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, that's not what I'm <laughs> No, that's <laughs> far from it. Far from it. Yeah, the layman will think that way. Yes, it will be like revenge. Right? Yeah, no, no, no. It's, it's not a business of revenge. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a governance issue. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, issue of principle, style, and uh, character. The PDP and the APC are different parties mm -hmm. with different philosophies. Mm -hmm. The APC will not think like that. Mm -hmm. The APC wants to win an election fair and square. In, in spite of the fact that they have all the institutional support, APC will want to see a more, play, a more level playing field for everybody. And if you heard the president, he said it. He's not out to do to them what they had always done to him. I share in the same view that I'm not looking, if you give me all the opportunities to rig an election, I will find it very difficult to do so. Because I want to stand and speak to the people of Delta State as a governor elected by them. And I will find it extremely difficult to stand before them knowing that I cheated to get to that office. If I cheat to get to that office, I may not be able to perform. But if I have the correct mandate of the people, which is what I seek, I believe I will represent them adequately and I'm sure they'll be satisfied. But to take advantage of the, the structure, the, the governance structure, the institutional structure, no, that's not I seek. I seek a level playing field from all the institutions, police, INEX, soldiers, whoever is in charge. Well, what has always been the discussion on elections in Delta State is that there is the election that takes place on land and there is the election that takes place in water and that if you control the water, you control the elections. Controlling the water is also a metaphor for manipulating the figures and so on. Do you think, do you think that the structures are in place or are foolproof, or shall I say, waterproof? Yeah, <laughs> waterproof yeah. because of the river and communities. Yes. Nobody can tell you today if it is foolproof, waterproof, or otherwise. But I believe that with the procedures that have been put in place by INEC in the voting, accreditation and voting, it will minimize the irregularities that came from all of those places. Mm. Especially with the issue of incident forms that I'm told will not be part of of the exercise and the enhanced card reader that has been brought to play. If you add the totality of all of that, it will tell you that, yes, there might still be minor irregularities here and there, but that wholesale irregularity that took place in those places, in about five local governments, will not be there. Delta State has been shortchanged short tremendously because of those five local governments. I area. Uh, worry not, worry south, worry southwest, Coco, um, Burutu, Bomadi, those are the places where we have, there are some people who, who describe them as the axis of electoral evil. <laughs> 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 but uh, things, uh, you know, we, we are not, that is the past. That is the past. And uh, we believe that, yes, going forward, it should be different. Does it mean that the people of Delta Del Del have become docile? Because you don't, you don't get this kind of rumble, you know, in news items from, from, from Delta State. They seem, they seem to be, after the election, there seem to be silence. Do you think, don't you think that even though the, the people of Delta might have been read progressively, they have, they have, they have come to conform? No, it's not true. So they are new oppressors, so they it, got the Stockholm Syndrome, that you now bond with your oppressor? No, no, no. Yes, there is that issue of docility, as you want to call it, but it's not so. The, we have taught them over the years to be conformist within the context of the electoral laws and the constitution of the, of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which is to say, don't take the laws into your hands. The fact that you are cheated is no license for you to become violent. So what do we do? Go to the election tribunal. Let us determine the issues. Let us determine the issues and to see if we are favored. Unfortunately, the judiciary was not kind to the people of Delta State. Was not kind to us at all. But right, having so. well, <laughs> that is for another discussion. <laughs> we were not kind. We were not kind.
to us because in, at so many instances that could have made them change the narrative, they didn't do so. Uh, there are some people have said that in every case you've gone to electoral uh, tribunal and the courts to challenge the um, the, the alleged of the heist of your victory. Yeah. You have tended to let it go and even cohabited with the people who you fought. That you came to terms with them. People have always said that, oh, if Ogboru loses after the election, we become friends again. So there's no, 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 no. I am one man who respects the sanctity of the mandate of the people. Mm. I am not able to negotiate it either way, plus or minus. I am not able to add or subtract to what the people have said. Therefore, I must follow strictly the stipulates of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and to follow those procedures and the processes legitimately, lawfully, to a logical conclusion. Having done that, having done that, I rest my case. But does that make me an enemy to those people? No, we're opponents. Does it make them good guys? I don't agree. But should I fight or have issues, personal issues with them because of it? No. But I have also not been able to fraternize with them. For instance, up until the former governor Dwaga joined our party, I only met him in the social functions. I never visited him one day. We never sat one day. We never had any meeting anywhere, anywhere in this world, except I met him at the, at, in a public place. The same thing will go for James Igori. We have never sat. When I came back to this country some years ago, I had a meeting, a brief meeting with him. And after that, we never met again, except maybe on one or two occasions. I am not able to negotiate the mandate of the people of Delta State, good, bad, or indifferent. I'm sorry. That's interesting. Now, let us uh, go back a little bit. Um, the primaries were a little contentious, and you still have the Emerald Group and so on, uh, and so on, still saying, well, uh, you didn't get the primary uh, victory, the right way. There's the, the, the this sense that there's bitterness within the APC. How, how, how well are you along the line of bringing them together? Well, bitterness may not be justified because they know deep down in them that they were defeated fair and square. We did not manipulate the process. We did not do anything untoward. We did not take any advantage of any situation to get any vote against anybody. So whatever vote we got, we got through the tint of hard work and the following or the followership that we have in the party. And of course, the confidence that they have in the leadership that is coming, which is mine. So if there is in their mind some ill feelings, it is not called for, it is not justified. Having said that, we took time to get into dialogue with one or two of them, or uh, in fact, all of them. At one time, the party set up a reconciliation committee to douse feelings. At another time, the national chairman of our party took the initiative to bring everybody together. That also went. And then at the apex of leadership of the country, the vice president of our country called all of us and that we should come together. That process is still ongoing as a track two process. Whereas they are in court, we are still discussing these issues. I believe that at the end of the day, we will resolve the issues amicably. The former governor, um, Emmanuel Duan, has uh, joined the APC. He was also there at the rally in Wari. How have you been relating to each other, being former rivals? <laughs> You know, that man is also my in-law, you know. His daughter was married to my nephew. You were in-laws when you were you arrived. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. But you see, even when we took him to court, and the court removed him for a period of time, yes, and he was now out of office, and we had to do a run election. We met in the INEC office, and we held hands and came out. There was no love lost. He, there was one thing that Emmanuel Oduaga, Dr. Manuel Oduaga would tell you. 
all throughout the period he was in office or in court, we never had any personal issues. I never one day said something negative about him. I didn't go to press to disturb his government. I just termed that period of his government as illegality, and I left it at that. Whatever he did for me, as even if he built all the castles in this world, I wasn't going to be satisfied. But then, there cannot be a lacuna in governance. So he had to fill in, and he did what he did. But to be frank with you, working with him today, we can see that we can bond together. We can see that we have shared experiences we can put together to help the party to grow. And um, some of the conceptions we had of each other are not quite so today. Like what? And they may have thought that I was a very unruly kind of person because that's what they tell them. But he finds in me a different kind of person. I respect him because he's my elder. I give him the respect because he was also a former governor. So with that, I haven't got any problems dealing with him at all. And when, I, when, I, when there are issues there, he intervenes like a statesman, and I appreciate that. Even when people want to go against the grain, he says, no, the word great is saying is the right thing, and that's where we have to go. So we bond at that level. I'm, it's, a, it's a privilege we're working together. All those things we put behind us, and we're looking forward for Delta State. You know, you know one guy regarded when he was in Paris and illegality? It's his past. What can you do? It's a past illegality. It's a past illegality. It's now, I never call him Excellency then. <laughs> you never did. I never, but now I call him Excellency. Let me say about you. have already accepted the illegality. I've not accepted, accepted it. Has, he has exhausted it. The, the fusion of time is gone. <laughs> There's nothing there. What am I going to Am I going to recreate the world? No. That's past. It's gone. I'm not going to kill Odwaga because something went on wrong between the two of us. No. Now we are looking forward to how we are going to help our state. And I can tell you deep down in him, he knows that he made several mistakes and this is an opportunity for him to help us correct it. There's another loom figure in uh, Delta politics, and that is uh, uh, Chief Nanefe Ibori. He is now going to, he's pitching his battle against you in this context because he is not a governor now, but he is pitching a battle as a supporter of the incumbent, as a defying a call. Now, how do you make of his uh, content? Because it's also from your own stronghold, which is the land. <laughs> Let me tell you. First and foremost, Chief James Igori is not a member of the APC, he's a PDP man. Yes. And a very strong and powerful leader in that party. So you are not going to expect Jim Sibori to come and be a share leader in my own party. He has to defend the integrity of his party and support all their candidates. But whether that we say well, that if that is enough to translate into votes in our stronghold is another question. When he was governor, he was not able to take the votes from Delta Central from us. Now he's not contesting, he's not on the ballot. I'm not so sure he'll be able to do so. I'm not so sure. So I'm saying that it's of no real value to PDP, is that what you're saying? In Delta Central, yes. we control the votes. The people are dead. Ninety-five percent of the people of Delta Central are, P are APC. They're not PDP. So James Igori's influence in Delta Central is going to be minimal, very minimal. Mm. But outside the state, he has other areas in which he can help Odum Okowa which we may not be able to stop. So he's also still he's an asset. You can't take that away. But not in Delta Central. In no, Delta but, but Central, he won't be There's one local government. That's his own local government. It's been a problem area for us. <coughs> it still might be a problem area, we don't know. But it may not be as bad as it used to be. Mm. Yeah. They are saying it's going to be useful from outside the plant. Yes, that's the only place way. he can help them. Outside, outside, Delta, the country, outside Delta State. Uh, outside Delta Central in particular. He may be able to help them in Delta North, or in parts of Delta South, or in Abuja. How in Abuja? Abuja, well, he has friends everywhere. James Bury is a very but, powerful but politician. He, he, he's going to use the same infrastructure that 
they use when, when he will not have access to those what he has he can beg <laughs> <laughs> but he will not be able to get them <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's going to listen to him there. No, no. Okay. Yeah. Now, it has been said that one of the strong reasons of COA should have a second term is that there is rotation of governorship in Delta State and that uh, COA has done its first term. That is entitled to have a second term, just as uh, uh, Ibori had his two terms and Udoa had his two terms from. From Delta South, and that is time for Delta North. And the case has been made that it is their right to have it this time. Well, this issue of zoning does not have anything to do with us in the APC. If you remember correctly, I contested against Chief James Igori. Yes. Both of us are robots. When I was doing so, I had support from Delta North, from Delta Central, and from Delta South. They didn't tell me then that it was there was a zoning. And then, of course, we know how that went. I contested against Dr. Emmanuel Odwaga. Mm -hmm. He was from Delta South. I, if I remember correctly, I had 45% of the votes from Delta North in those elections. And I had close to 70% of the votes in Delta Central in those elections. Mm -hmm. It was from Delta South, from those riverine communities that I told you that we got worsted. Nobody said then that there That's was a zoning. strong word. The, pardon? That's a strong word. <laughs> no, 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 but it's a fact. It's a fact. It's a fact. It's a fact. <laughs> The facts are not going to change. My relationship okay. with Odwaga will not change the facts. Mm -hmm. The facts are going to be there forever. We can't change them. Truth will last forever. Yeah. When I was doing that with uh, Chief uh, Dr. Odwaga, nobody said that there was zoning, zoning. The people in Delta not voted for me. They worked for me. They gave me 45% of the votes, there, even if some of them were secured. In any case, in all of those elections, there has never been any time in which any senatorial district was precluded. All the elections for Delta State governorship had, had been contested for by persons from different senatorial districts. There's never been at any time where it was said that for the sake of zoning, everybody should leave it for Delta North. No. But Waga won a second term by stint of hard work and the mercy of the courts. James Igori escaped by whiskers, by the grace of God. Kowa may not be so lucky. <laughs> That's the problem. Are, are you so sure? He may not be so lucky. I just told you. Um, first, that government has not performed. Let's face it, they've not performed. They perform on newspapers and on television. But if you went to Delta State today, it's probably the, the dirtiest state in the, in, in the entire Federal Republic of Nigeria. From one end of the state to the other state is filled. On both sides of the road are bush and dirt that are waiting for somebody to clean up, and which is not being cleaned up, and there is no initiative. The issue of jobs has become an issue because there are no initiatives to create opportunities. Not only that, there has been no new industries in the state in the past four years, which means that what is there is diminishing. So it's not a very popular government. And the people from Delta State are not going to sacrifice themselves or commit suicide because somebody from a particular ethnic group or from a particular zone wants to become governor for a second term. No, if he, come, if he, he should campaign on his on his achievements. If the people of Delta State believe that he did well, they'll vote for him. But trying to tell the people of Delta State that he must do a second term, that is not an argument at all, and nobody listens to him. In any case, it is unconstitutional, and it is not justiciable. So you cannot talk about it. So it's convention. There's nothing, there's nothing like convention. Any convention that is not backed by a constitution must be held with caution. I agree. Delta State is, um, is a multi-ethnic state. I agree. Be really a multi-ethnic state. Well, I agree. Actually, you have a robust, a good job. 
Yes. And you have ties with uh, almost every post ties yes, here, yes, ties yes. there, I will, and so on and so forth. I was going to deep in the argument yes. that if it were on the basis of blood, I am also an Anioma person. Because my mother is still living. Three quarter of my blood is Anioma. Because th um, two of my, my, my grandparents are Anioma. My mother is Anioma. So if you take my, fa my parents, my grand, my grandparents and my parents, four of them, three of them are from Delta North. It's yeah, only my father that is from Delta. So what, what that tells you that I have three quarter of Nyoma in me. And in my house, we speak both Kwale and Urubo and any other language that we can speak, including English. Pidgin English. Pidgin English inclusive. So it is unthinkable for you to bring such a proposition to me that the basis for leadership must be where you come from. It does not matter to me at all because I am liberated from those type of mundane thoughts. So you are the one calling for meritocracy rather than ethnic balance. Oh, we but have it doesn't really work in more society. No, 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 no. It, it, it cannot work. It cannot work because that tone by tone leadership only leads to mendacity and mediocrity. Yeah. And at the end of the day, turn by turn is just an opportunity or the, an euphemism for cutting away the wealth and the, the wealth of the people and then instituting bad leadership and impunity. We want yeah. to see a government that is standing on its toes based on the fact that they believe that the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria must be respected, that the will of the people must be respected, that their, their resources must be well used, accounted for, meaning that they take responsibility and they discharge that responsibility by accounting for it. We don't want a government that is an overlord, that is not responsible to anybody, because if you, the truth of the matter is that the PDP government has never been responsible to anybody in Delta State. That's interesting. So when this, all of this is over, and if you become the next governor of uh, Delta State, what is it that you will do differently? I have just told you some of the things that I would do differently. If I have enumerated some ills. Yeah, you mentioned, you mentioned yeah. the ills. You yeah, I mentioned the, the ills. But yeah. yes, the, the, the fact that you are able to identify those ills means that you have to do things differently. For instance, the critical thing right now, in my view, one of the things that has to be done urgently is to change the level of, of environmental degradation that has taken place in the state. We have been talking about oil, oil pollution having degraded the environment. But I can tell you, the human degradation that we give to Delta State is worse than the oil pollution. Explain. Explain. Have you not been there? If you have been to Delta State recently, you will find that, like the worry you knew is not the same worry you are seeing today. Right. Worry has not it has not improved one iota from what you knew 20 years ago. If anything, is getting smaller, getting uglier, getting dirtier, and then getting even more risky. That nightlife has become a challenge. You can't go out at night anymore. When we were younger, we could leave early at 12 midnight, we'll drive to worry for a party. You cannot try that today, because life is no more guaranteed. There's no security, safety anymore in Delta State. So that's something we have to look at. But you know what's causing that? The leadership and the environment. And there's a strong correlation between leadership and environment. Very strong correlation. If you see a responsible leader or responsible leadership, you will find that the first thing they want to do is to make sure that the environment is well taken care of. And then there is security of lives and property. Having done those two things, then we start to talk about jobs, schools, housing, and things like that. And then talking about them in a qualitative manner. But that's not what they are doing in Delta State at all. On the contrary, I am suspicious of the fact that subtly they may be encouraging insecurity that they may be able to continue to deceive the people with all of these false narratives of turn-by-turn -turn leadership. 
Because if the people are enlightened, they will ask questions. They want to know how much they earn as a government. They want to know what those monies were spent for. They want to know which of the priorities were, you know, in which those spendings took place. Because the priorities are important also. That you spend government money is one thing, but if you are not getting the priorities right, that's another issue. So not only are you going to be prudent, you must have your priorities right. And I think that this government is not sensible enough to have its priorities, if they have at all. There's only one priority I know they have, to employ thousands and thousands of SAs, which will become pulling agents or campaign agents for a governor. It is unheard of. It's unheard of. And if you go to Delta State and ask the teachers, they will tell you that they have been shortchanged. They are promoted and they are not paid. Some of them will tell you that they have changed the pension scheme in such a way that now even local government workers have a better pension take home than themselves. We are going to look at all of those issues, but there's really job apathy, there's real apathy dissonance in the state from the, employ the, the state employees. That also will have to change. And then there was one critical one Chief Kokori was talking of the other day, and Dr. Emmanuel Lodwaga. He made sure that these WIAC payments were free. This government came back, instead of developing and deepening the investment in the human resources portfolio, reversed that, and now asking people to go and pay 25,000 naira instead of 12,000 naira for WIAC payments. WIAC is charging 25, but the state is asking them to pay 20, uh, charging 12,000, but the state is asking them to pay 25. Are you which, saying they are stripping off this? <laughs> I don't know what they are doing. Instead of saying it should be free, it says they should come and pay for it. So these are issues, but other issues that you have to really look at. What are the areas of opportunities for Delta State? In which areas do we have core competence, cognitive experience that we can invest in that will be beneficial to the state? I've not seen anything new in the state. There's nothing new at all. There are no, in, new, no new industries. What new industries are you going to introduce? <laughs> look, oil and gas is a sector that we have to look at critically. The marine sector is a sector we have to look at critically. But if we ask them to go out and tap the potentials there, we know they do not have the capital to do so. So we'll come up with a scheme in which all we will look at the issues, encourage Deltans to invest in those places in a partnership scheme with the state. We are going to have even small partnership. It doesn't matter. We will help you. Not only with seed capital, we will help you with know-how. We will help you to grow your business. We will put a template on ground that can make sure that over years they can take off and then we can de-invest and they can own their businesses. But it must be radically, it must be radical in its orientation. It cannot be piecemeal, it must be holistic. Because any piecemeal approach today is asking the people to co commit genocide by installment. The people are dying. Um, that's interesting. Um, I have to use this fish met metaphor because you understand it as somebody who knows about fish business. Yeah. They have said that the finances, some people have said that the finances in Delta State have been so bad, they are like holding a basket, a fish basket, without fish inside, the smelling of fish, but there's no fish. Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, you actually bring to governance your past experiences. The man who is there now, I'm not so sure, has any entrepreneurial thinking in his head, has no investment initiative in his head, and cannot understand how you could put a portfolio of a mix of portfolio to benefit the people because he's never been that kind of person. He's never been creative. He's not somebody who can conceptualize and implement. That's a lawmaker. It's a, the, the job of a lawmaker and that of a chief executive are different things. Managing resources, so human resources, financial resources, and material resources, is a different kind of thinking. It's not like making laws. That's a different kind of thinking completely. You have to understand how to put those mixed together to make the end result good. And I'm not sure he understands that. It's not his background. It's not his thinking, it's not his way of life. He's never been brought up in that kind of environment. So he's not really helpful to us, and that's the truth. Uh, now, finally, let's look at uh, the presidential election. Oh, the president was there, 
uh, handed the flag to you and all of that. And uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we understand all, all of that. But um, since 1999, Delta has never voted other than for PTP presidential election, and massively at that. How there was no story about whether it was other way, otherwise, it was not even really challenged at the center. How is how do you expect? Given the crowd, the crowd was quite impressive. Many people were were really dazed at, at 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 the crowd. How do you translate that into a presidential win? Or is that is it just about Ogboru's victory and not Buhari's victory? No, far from it. I look I had already laid the foundation for that question. I told you earlier on PDP Delta State is not a PDP controlled state. There's a PDP government there, but the people are not PDP compliant. Majority of the people of Delta State do not believe in PDP and they do not believe in their philosophy and they don't want PDP. We had had problems in the past, and I told you institutional problems that made it impossible for any non PDP members to win elections there. Okay, I can tell you what the last election the president won. Um, one at the fair. I didn't win in Delta State. First, Jonathan had about five or six hundred thousand votes. They said it was not enough, they had to increase it. <laughs> <laughs> so it was not about actual voting. But now, the APC, which is the president's party, is very solidly on ground today. All the oppos opposition elements that were outside have come into the party, and we are now working. The campaign structure alone for Mr. President in that state for the presidential election is more than three times the votes he got in Delta State in the last election. It's a big difference. My campaign organization alone is about 40,000 people. If we add the president's campaign organization and the senators, like, so we have about 200,000 people already who are working for elections in Delta State right now. All of them are going to vote for APC. And like our national chairman said in that rally, and you saw the rally yeah. yourself, it was one of his kind. Our national chairman identified properly that what he was seeing there was 10 times more what they saw before. Which is to say, if you have to extrapolate from that, if the president got about 40,000 votes before, he should be getting 400,000 votes. But we're not looking at 400,000 votes. We're looking at 75% of the votes cast in Delta State. That's what the president will get. And it is not me, yes, my influence there and telling them that that is the right way to go is important. <clears throat> but on his own credentials, the people love the president because they believe in him. They believe he has integrity, they believe he's honest, they believe he's doing his best for, for the country, and they believe that he has done better than PDP, even when his circumstances were bad. With less monies, he has achieved far much more. So the people believe that giving him another four years will set the stage for the development of this country proper. Even if he's not going to achieve it, they know that it is far better to have him there than to put this country on a reverse gear. The truth of the matter is, PDP has no business talking about coming to rule this country again. They squandered over 10 years, uh, monies that should have been used for 10 years to run this country. They put the country in big debts. I made an analysis some time ago. The money required to run this government for 10 years was treated away by them by also, also sorts of excuses. And then how do you expect the president, who has recovered trillions from a PDP government, to now come and say we should go and hand over power to PDP? Or a people who know that these are the facts, when I say they want PDP to come and form a government. PDP cannot form a federal government in Nigeria now. I'm even surprised that they were not ashamed enough to change the name of the party. Still campaigning on PDP is a disservice to Nigeria and to the party. Because the truth of the matter is that if it were the old Buhari, the issues would have been treated differently. <laughs> and I'm not joking about it. <laughs> what those guys did to this country is not something we should forget in a hurry. And to be talking about voting for one of the actors that created that problem is a big slap to the Nigerian people. And we should be very careful. All right. That has been. Uh a conversation with uh, Great Ogboru, the APC candidate for governorship in Delta State. 
very articulate and uh, uh, cool. Uh, thank you very much for being on my show. Thank you. I'm grateful. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching the program today. You can catch up with my published columns and articles on my website, www.samomashe.com. Also follow me on uh, Twitter. My handle is at Sam Omashe. Enjoy the rest of your day. Until the next time, be good.